Hi, this is Nir from Polypop Live and today we're going to learn how to create dynamic and customizable backgrounds by using the pixel shift image filter in Polypop Live. And when I say dynamic backgrounds, I mean live non-repetitive random animation similar to the one that you're seeing behind me right now. So let me move my screen so we'll see it better. And we will also learn how to customize it according to our brand, our needs, or our creativity. In this case, you can see how the background is following the Polypop Live brand guideline uh, by the colors, by the logo that's flying around, and by the 3D flying lollipops that are part of the Polypop Live's logo. Here's another example uh, of a background I created with flowers I took from the Polypop Live's in-app 3D library. But remember, you don't have to use objects from the in-app library. You can also create your own objects in any 3D app, like Blender, for example, or you can download them from the web. So after watching this tutorial, you'll be able to take these kind of backgrounds to many different directions according to your need. This is a different kind of background uh, using the same technique, but uh, different image filters. This whole background is actually built with this. 3D object I took from the library and we got that interesting background. So let me show you one final example. Again, using the same technique, just applying different filters to create a much darker, mysterious kind of background. So after seeing what's possible, let's learn how to do that. But remember, these were only four examples. You can use your creativity or your imagination to create a completely different kind of background with a different look and feel to it according to your needs. Okay, so let's start from scratch. Let's create a new scene with nothing in it and move from there. Let's click on the plus button in the scene switcher to create a new scene. Now that we have a new scene, let me just uh, change the background color so you can see the canvas better. And there we go. Now we can start working. Our first step will be to bring a 3D object into our canvas. To do that, we will click on the plus button here in the scene layout. Make sure we chose the 3D objects from the categories and add a 3D object to our scene. You can add whatever 3D object you want. For this example, I'm going to choose uh, the orange one 3D object. And now we have a 3D orange in our scene. Let's reposition it, scale it up and there we go the next thing we'll need to do is disable the clear each frame in the background to do that we will click on the background and disable the clear each frame by disabling the clear each frame option we're telling polypop not to clear the pixels from our canvas it means that whenever something moves on the canvas the pixels will stay behind it i'm going to select it with my mouse and move it around and we'll be able to see that the pixels are not being cleared from the canvas. Our next step is going to be to add a pixel shift image filter to the scene. Let's click on the plus button here on the scene layout. Under categories, we will choose the image filters and we will double click on the pixel shift image filter. And this is what it does by its default state. So let's learn how to control its properties for our needs. Make sure you select the pixel shift image filter in the scene layout so you will see its properties on the bottom. For this tutorial, I'm going to make the user interface a bit bigger by pressing Ctrl plus so you'll have a better view of what's going on. Let's first look at the distort, which is at the bottom. And we can see that by tweaking it, we can create a bigger or smaller distortion. In order for us to better understand what's going on, I'm gonna make the distort zero, so there will be no distortion. Above the distort, we can see the scale property. Changing the scale values will give the effect of zooming in and out of this orange. Again, I'm gonna change it to one, so we'll better understand what's going on. Above the scale, there is rotate, which will make the pixel rotate and create this interesting effect. You can probably understand by now that in order to make things more interesting, this orange needs to move in our scene. So, so let's make it move. Let's add a mod to it. We will click on the orange and in its properties under mod, let's add a random move mod. Now the orange is moving around in our scene and just by that creating a much more interesting background. We can control the orange speed by changing the time values in the random move mod 
So right now it's moving really slow and now it's moving really, really fast. I can also add a rotate mod to it so it will not look so flat. Let's click on the plus button in the mods, add rotate mod. And now the orange is moving and rotating simultaneously. I'm also going to disable the cast shadows of the orange because it creates this really dark black shadow. Uh, personally, I don't like it, but you can definitely leave it on if you want. So now the background is less contrast, which personally I prefer. Now let's go back to the pixel shift image filter properties. I'm going to click on its layer. I'm going to change the value of the scale. And now because the pixel shift is zooming, it creates this really tunnel-like effect and makes it much more dynamic. You can play with its values to create whatever it is that you like or you desire. I'm going to play around just to show you what's possible, but there's no right or wrong here. You can do whatever you want. So I'm going to change the values to create different kind of effects. It's a higher value, small value. And remember, you can also play with other values like the distort to create different kind of effect and the rotate. This is all happening with just one orange. I can add more oranges and see what's going to happen. So I'm going to select the orange layer and I'm going to copy paste it by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And I did it three times and now we have four oranges that create much more movement. So once you're happy with the movement or what's going on on the background, you can start adding more image filters to create even more interesting things. So let's do that. I'm going to click on the plus button here under the scene layout. There are plenty of image filters to play around with. Uh, you should definitely check them all by yourself. I'm going to show you just one or two to give you an idea of what's possible. So let's start with um, edges. Let's double click on the edges image filter and immediately it creates this interesting effect. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. It depends on really what you are looking for. We can also play with the image filters properties. I'm just going to play around to show you what's possible, but you should definitely experiment by yourself. This is taking it more to the dark side. Now I'm playing with the color blend. Get a different kind of effect. Source blend. You can see the options are endless. This is this is the fun part. This is where you should definitely experiment, have fun and just like, you know, play around with it. There are a few more things I wanted to show you before we end this tutorial. The first is how easy it is to create these backgrounds with your logo. So for that, I'm going to again create a new scene by clicking on the plus button under the scene. I'm going to change that background again so you will see better. And now let's add a 3D object we can add our logo to. Let's click on the plus button here under the scene layout. Go to 3D object and choose one of the 3D objects that have these object textures colors on them, which means that we can replace their texture. For this example, let's bring circle box. Polypop will ask us to choose a texture for the object. I already have my logo in my library, but if not, you can just click on the plus button and import your logo image. Since I already have it here, I'm going to select the logo with white line and click OK. So now the 3D object that I imported uses Polypop's logo as a texture. Let's change the colors on the side, which are now green, to the colors of our brand. And there you go, you can easily have a 3D object with your logo in Polypop. I'm going to repeat the steps that we did before, adding random movement mod and rotation mod to this 3D object. So that's done and now we have six moving Polypop logos in our scene. You can see that I haven't disabled the clear each frame on the background, so let's do that. If we'll add a pixel shift image filter, the pixel will shift and create a movement like before. But I wanted to show you something else. Before adding the pixel shift filter, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur image filter. Right now, the Gaussian blur image filter is on top of all the other layers seen in my scene layout. I'm going to move it down beneath the 3D screen layer. And we can see it changes the clear each frame effect to something completely different, something that looks more like a trail or a comet. By playing with the blur amount values in the layers properties, we can create different effects that create different look and feel to the background. 
And now let's add the pixel shift image filter. Again, the default is really extreme, so I'm going to tweak it a little bit. And now we have a background with a completely different look and feel to it. So before we end this tutorial, let me show you how you can nest this to create a different kind of effect. I'm going to add one last scene to my project by clicking the plus button again. We can see the scene is empty. I'm going to change the background color again. And now we're going to nest the scene we just created in this scene. To do that, I will press the Alt key. And while pressing Alt, I will drag the scene I created into my canvas. And we can see that now the scene is nested here. Let's add image filter on this nested scene to create a different kind of effect. Let's again click on the plus button on the scene layout. And this time let's choose the half tone image filter, double click on that. And we can see our background looks completely different now. We can play with the halftone properties too. We can change the size of the dot to small to create a really interesting effect or to large, a different kind of look. We can change the shape from dot to square or to rounded square. And I think you got the hang of it now. Basically, you just need to keep exploring, keep experimenting, and most importantly, have fun until you find a background that will be perfect for your live stream. So this is it. This is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.